aka the tip of the spear. Um, I got some interesting guests with me tonight. I got Negi from the Torah Knights. I got Mikael, everybody's favorite big brother. I got him on the panel. I got Shalma from the tip of the spear. And I got brother Basil Ramel on the panel tonight. And we're going to be discussing urban Christian apologetics dedicated to you know who. So um, everybody knows my guests. If you've been on any um, hangout, you've seen Negi, you know Shalma. Everybody knows Basil, uh, Basil's post whenever he's on Google Hangout. So everybody on the panel is pretty much, um, you know, pretty much well known, whether with the pen or with their face. So um, with that being said, everybody know who I am. I don't need to introduce myself no more. So with that being said, we're going to get this started off and we're going to be discussing um, urban apologetics um, and the cancer it's causing in the community and um, why they, what is their true motive? Because it definitely feels like there's some type of motive that they're after and I'm starting to see it because I kept quiet on this thing for a long time and the more and more I research it, the more and more I'm like, this is folly, this is nonsense. And it just seems to me that it seems like it seems no urban like counterintelligence program that they used to set up um, in the early 60s, late 60s um, to debunk anything that um, so-called African-Americans try and do. And I've noticed a lot of shady moves on this urban apologetic team that they're doing. And I can clearly see what's happening happen and what's going to happen. So what I'm now putting my sword in the fight and I'm now sitting up there saying enough is enough and it's a bunch of folly So and, and nonsense. I really, I'm not gonna cuss today, all right? Cause I don't wanna hear Mikael's mouth cussing me out. <laughs> Telling me I ain't allowed to cuss, so I'm not gonna do that right now. Y'all know who I am. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep the good boy face. Um, I wanna um, first and foremost uh, give praises and all glory to the mighty one the um, Savior and Redeemer of Israel. Um, may his name be exalted forever. And um, I'm going to let Mikael take it from here. Mikael. All uh, right, yeah. Shalom, shalom. Grace and peace to everybody that's viewing uh, our brother Chris show. I thank everybody for coming out. I appreciate you, my brother, for inviting me on. Um, I'll never pass up a chance to bang on lies, of course, in the name of truth. Uh, I like to also acknowledge all those who acknowledge the feast of our Lord. We in the feast of unleavened bread, day three, by my count. And um, it's, it's a glorious time of year. I always look forward to it around this time of year, like most of Israel does, those who do recognize at least trying to observe it outside of the land. And, um, you know, yeah, so it's, it's a beautiful time, man. <clears throat> so when you asked me that I want to come on and tell me the subject, because we hadn't talked for a while, I'm like, oh, yeah, most definitely. I sure will, because I was actually in the group having like a little back and forth with some of the uh, so-called uh, urban apologists. I, I call them Christian antagonists. Uh, that's really what they are, Christian antagonists. I mean, um, you know, they, they have a little mission and an agenda. I don't see it doing any real dent putting any real dent in the truth movement. Um, because like I said, I was just looking at a study. I was trying to find it before I came on where it was saying uh, the um, Hebrew Israelite identity um, has become the fastest growing identity um, in the Western Hemisphere. Now, I knew that from years ago, but it's still currently at that pace and it's just steady going growing even faster and faster. So they can't stop it because it's prophecy, you know. Um, but, you know, we got to, uh, like you said, uh, when you see, when you hit it, it's one thing to deal with something just on a doctrinal basis because we've been trained to shoot down false doctrine, most of us, that is under the um, Israelite persuasion or, I, or recognize ourselves as, as the true Israelites. We've always been trained to shoot down false doctrine. And, um, you know, so that's that's never been a problem. Like they're not coming with anything new. Now, the only funny thing that I've seen them do, and this is where it's interesting, the point that you coming at, um, which, I, you know, I've been said that it was an agenda 
behind these cats. And, you know, it's a lot of Zionism connected to it. You can see it. It has the Zionist undertones. You can just do the research on some of the people that's been involved, some of the uh, scholars that they like to quote, so-called. Um, and it's also got like a little almost, now this is just me, little Jesuit thing connected to it too. So it's, <clears throat> it's definitely an agenda and it's way deeper than just doctrine. Because they're basically regurgitating the same trained commercial uh, Roman Christian doctrine that we've always heard growing up. But now what they'll seem to do is they're so um, determined to disprove us as far as being the true Jews, quote unquote, or Israelites of the ancient um, Shemitic people of the Bible, that they've gone to extincts. Uh, first of all, they hired our own people. And whatever shape, form, or fashion, that don't necessarily mean with money. I'm pretty sure a lot of them willingly done it. Uh, but they got our own people being our strongest fight, uh, 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 our strongest opposition against us while they sit back in the cut, with the exception of Vocab Malone, uh, John Mark Reiser, uh, is his real name. Um, he is the exception. You know, he'll jump and put his face out there. Um, but for the most part, they use uh, people from our own community. And if you look throughout history, you will see this is a continuous thing, um, you know. But the funny thing about it is, you know, when, when those things happen, it was usually just to take down a, a particular organization or something. But like you don't really see, if I could use the example, you really don't see black folks going at the Nation of Islam although they may disagree with their doctrine because they look at the good that they're doing in the community. You know what I'm saying? Getting people off drugs, getting people out of gang life. You know what I'm saying? Getting people literacy levels up, getting people jobs, you know, helping with health. These are the exact same things that the Hebrew Israelite community has been doing since its uh, inception. And whenever that is, it's debatable on when that started, especially if you know the scriptures and the most high you know, basically lets us know that he will always have those that knew that they was the true Israel. And so <clears throat> with that being said, it's definitely an agenda, Brother Chris. And I know you're going to expound on that a little later. But I just want to throw something out there real quick. I'm going to do a lesson on it on my channel. If anybody is interested, you could check me out. Um, Hebrews in the Hood on YouTube. That's Hebrews with a Z at the end. In the Hood, you know, it's Ebonics. And you could also have a Mikhail uh, Israel page, but it's not really anything going on. on there. And um, I'm going to do an entire lesson on this because I, I, I sent the little shock waves probably about a month ago or so, probably longer than that. I, matter of fact, most definitely longer than that. But they was trying to ignore it at first. Now I kind of just put it in their face where they couldn't. And it was dealing with uh, a scripture and a verse. Uh, I mean, a verse in the Bible in the Tanakh of. Uh, AKA Old Testament, that's uh, in uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 26. And uh, <clears throat> see, the way that these so called urban uh, uh, apologists or Christian antagonists do is they have basically a criteria. And in it, you know, they'll have certain doctrines of particular Israelite camps, as uh, the Israelites prefer to call them, based off the uh, based off the Torah, the Tanakh, and even, you can even see it in the New Testament, the term camp. But um, what they'll do is they'll build a whole profile on these particular groups, and they'll use the, the uh, precepts, verses, and uh, things of that nature that's quite common amongst these different Israelite groups while they're doing their, uh, you know, street preaching and things of that nature. So they a lot of times don't have the in-depth understanding that a lot of that a lot of Israelites have. But in certain occasions, they may have a, a particular amount of intel on certain camps due to having members that were former, um, you know, conscious Israelites, you know, in, in, in particular camps. And so when you come at them with something that's not as mainstream, they really don't know how to react to it. And I had that happen with me with a few of the members over there where I even had uh, 
a guy by the name of Jada Producer snatched his video down uh, while he was live in their Christian Hebrew Israelite um, group that the apologists have. He snatched it down live and there was witnesses. You know, it was about probably about 14, 15 witnesses that to see it on both sides. So, and he even admitted it came down, but of course he said he just didn't save it. And you know, that's hilarious. All of a sudden he didn't know, he actually even said he didn't know how to save it. And then he went and said he got lost and um, all these type of things. But it was an embarrassing moment for him because I basically asked him to read Deuteronomy 32 and 26. So I'm gonna do that real quick. And it's funny because it sent shockwaves so much now it's basically getting to the point, and this is a continuous theme amongst their groups. Uh, they've actually started to basically devalue the King James Version Bible. And uh, I've never seen this in my 23 years in Israel. I've never seen this amongst uh, modern day Christians. They usually love the KJV, although they've always been known to lean uh, or, or, or be more acceptable to um, more questionable, tra questionable translations like the NIV uh, and now the ESV. That's a new big thing they get. And when you research these books, especially when it comes to the Israelite quote unquote doctrine, you'll see why they gravitate towards these books. Uh, these are not books that were written under the authority of a king, like the most high had a uh, you know, had it happened in the past dealing with Israel, you can even look at Cyrus with his decree when we were in a Persian captivity. Um, you can see where he had it written throughout the tongues and the tongues of the Hebrews and tongues of the people or whatever under the king. Scriptures even tell you that he holds the king heart in his hand and he moves which way he, he you know, he share, he chooses. And so he uses uh, kings, presidents, governors, and things of that nature. All these things could be found in the in-depth of the scriptures, but they don't read that much um, as far as on that level. They, they really focus, they really lean on the knowledge of commentators and other people that they see as respectable. Um, when the fact is, you know, the King James, whether you agree with it all the way or not, or you may even feel it has some errors in it and things of that nature. But one thing you cannot doubt is that you can get uh, truth out of it. But for the simple fact that the most high said that his word would go throughout the world. And if you look at the number one dispersed book in the world, it is the King James Version Bible. So all these other new versions have actually started to rise up and they're written by little theologians, you know, new guys, theologians and philosophers. None of these people are important people in the eyes of the most high, according to the criteria that he sat down whenever he sent Israel into captivity. If he wanted them to get a message or a command to do something, he, he would send it through those rulers. And so that it really just disqualifies a lot of, the, of what they're doing. But here's the funny thing. So I was going to read it real quick so I can let you get to your lesson. Like I say, I ain't going to do the whole lesson here. But since we pulling the swords out, it's time to stop playing. And I'm just you know, when I do my lesson, I'm just going to lay down my premise and I'm going to come with swords blazing and I'm not going to spend too much time going back and forth with them because I've already had a couple of people over there make numerous videos about me. I usually only respond to the first one. After that, it's kind of like I won't even go look to look at them. like I literally have a policy that after your first video about me, I won't watch the rest of them. And so they really just, you know, doing it as an exercise of futility. So here we go. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 26. Let's see what got them so upset to the point where they're looking for versions that, you know, I seen some so funny last night that, I mean, you would have to go into Christian and Hebrew Israelite apologist group. I was actually talking with a sister named Lasagna, and I'm going to give a shout out to that sister. She actually was more scholastic than any of those brothers over there I've ever dealt with. And that's not an insult to them, but honestly, it shocked me. She was way more. And you could tell she was studying. Now, a lot of it was on the fly. because You could tell she hadn't read certain things either because she would take a while to come back. You know what I'm saying? So she went and looked it up, did the little, you know how you do the name search engine and all that type of stuff. So she had to find about five or six different translations to try to take away from what, what it obviously says. So let's go to, um, but that was fun with her. I give a shout out to her. And also shout out to G-Man too. And uh, it was somebody else. Oh, Pastor Sean. 
That's another cool cat over there. I like Pastor Sean too and Sister Sherry. All right, here we go. Deuteronomy 32 and 26. It says, I said, I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Now, it's clear what it says. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. And my stance is, it's not only dealing with, now they all kind of agree that it's dealing with the nations won't really remember the Israelites no more, right? But that hurts their whole movement if they make the claim that the so-called European or the Israeli Jews that are more common that everybody recognizes Jews are the Jews of the Bible because everybody recognized them. Everybody remember them. They've never, they even had a whole nation of leagues or the United Nations get together to do some things for them because they said those were those people. So it does not apply to them. So it caused a problem. And I'm making even a call that it also had, it goes both ways. It also has to deal with um, on a um, grand scale, the nation of Israel as a whole, also uh, the remembrance of them disappearing, meaning their identity would be lost. You know what I'm saying? And multiple scriptures back this up. I believe it's Isaiah 44 and 5. I believe that's off the top of my head where he says that uh, the prophecy that says that one will surname themselves after Israel, and Jacob and God. Well, if your identity was never taken, which your name is part of your culture and our identity, what need would the Jews have to start surnaming themselves or giving themselves names of that nation? Because that's what it's talking about. So that kills them. So basically, it's a no-win situation from them if you're just coming from the Bible itself and not from these, uh, you know, all this extra commentary and stuff, because they know in the 66 or, you know, and it's a lot of different versions of Bible. I won't just say like, oh, it's only the KJB that you can use. It's just real convenient for them at times to start, man, let, let me try to it's like they intentionally say, let me go try to find a version that don't say that because they can't deal with it. But they've been dealing with it all up until this point. And so, yeah, and so that's that's really what caused a big problem with them. And then I want to show something else funny. Now, normally what I do, like I was saying earlier, I normally uh, don't I try not to just repeat the same chapters and verses over and over. That's become like kind of uh, almost. Well, I won't downplay the scriptures, but they're almost looked at as generic because they see it so much, you know. So I started just whipping out stuff that I normally deal with in the privacy of the other brothers and things of that nature when we're dealing with me. But I'm going to quote something that almost all Israelites quote, and it is Psalms chapter 83 and verse 3. Now, they're very familiar with this, but I think it's one little part in there that they don't pay attention to. And this is Psalms chapter 83. It says, um, it says, uh, and now this is talking about the conspiracy of the nations to wipe away the children of Israel, uh, the nationality, even, even to the point of trying to destroy them physically. Now, listen to this. It says, um, Psalms 83 and verse 3, it says, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Stop right there. Now, most people only focus on the crafty counsel against thy people. And then verse four, where it says, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. The name of Israel will be no more in remembrance. So you got to think about it. They're only looking at it from a military strategic point of view, which is part of it, which is a very big part of it, especially when this uh, prophecy, because the Psalms, are basically prophecies. I mean, especially if they believe in the master teacher, Jesus Christ, he told you to go to the prophets and the Psalms and all of that, right, and the law. So yes, it's a military standpoint from, especially from when it first took place. But if you look at it, it's also telling you that the name of Israel will be no more. Now we just read in Deuteronomy 32 and 26, they say he will cause the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Who the only people on earth that don't know who they are and don't nobody else seem to want to tell them who they are if they know on a general scale? We know who that is, and it's not the Jewish cat. Let me also add 
that, um, you know, you also have other scriptures that back this up. Like I brought up the Isaiah 44, where it said that they are going to start to surname themselves. Like I did myself, Mikael ben Israel. But my slave name was Mike Ward. Now, this is very key. They, they don't think the Bible is still alive. They think it's a dead paper and it's just historical and it stopped in 70 AD. But <laughs> here's another thing. Zechariah chapter eight. Now I brought this up now and I ain't trying to put all my jewels out here. So I'm gonna read two more spots and I'm gonna let you get to your mission at hand. But Zechariah chapter eight, here's another one. That also confirms this. Now, let's go to Zechariah chapter 8, and I'm going to read verse 23. So it's Zechariah 8, verse 23. Here we go. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men, this is the future, shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him, that is a Jew saying, we will go with you for we have heard that God is with you. Now, if you read this with the context of, uh, context of all the other scriptures, and that's why we have a thing where we say line upon line of precept upon precept because the scriptures tell us that. They, they totally want us to rip that part out the Bible. As a matter of fact, they've ripped so many parts out the Bible left now, they probably only got like one chapter left because of the Israelites, right? Now, when you read it and you're looking at it, in that day, 10 men from other nations is going to come basically and say, you know, you, you know, you a Jew. I have heard God is with you. Now, if everybody know who these Jews are already, why would they have to hear God is with them? Like, it don't make sense. Ain't the whole reason the whole thing is that they are the chosen people of God? It's even based off scripture on why they say that they went over there in 1948. But that's another story. I don't want to get too deep on that one. But let me just end with this last two points right here. Because a lot of them seem to feel that the New Testament has preeminence over the Old Testament. And if anybody know me, I don't even like using that term. I'm just using it, those as generic terms. But I like to call it the original testament. You know what I'm saying? As many people call it the Tanakh, which has the Torah inside of it, right? So I'm going to show y'all something real interesting that I don't think people paid attention to. And this is leading up until uh, us going into the land, you know, the kingdom and all those type of things. I'm going to go to the prophet Isaiah. And I'm going to show you something now. If you are astute in any shape, form, or fashion of Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach, uh, Yahawashah, Yahoshua, Yeshia, Isa, whatever you prefer to call him, if you are a student of him, then surely his word should be supreme, right? So I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 61. In Isaiah chapter 61, I want y'all to check this out with me. Okay, this is what it says. This is verse one. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes and oil of joy in the morning and garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called <clears throat> trees of righteousness and plenty of the Lord and might be glorified. It says, um, okay, matter of fact, let me see if I should stop right there. Yep, I'm going to stop right there. Now, Isaiah is in the spirit. Now, let's see the connection if you say you follow Christ. And I'll, let's see what he going to say. Now, this is dealing with, will the true Jews or Israelites lose their identity? Let's see. Let's go to Luke chapter 4. So I just want to show you that, that although they have an agenda, and it's, it's definitely somewhat uh, twisted and demonic, I don't think all of them had that attention. Like I say, the ones that I named seem sincere. 
But the uh, people behind the scenes definitely uh, is got some Jewish influence and they trying to shut us up. So Luke chapter four, I want to pick it up. It says, uh, I'm going to pick it up at, at, at uh, verse 14. And this is what it says. It says, and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit, spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout the region. It says, um, it says, and um, and the reason about, and he taught in their synagogues, glorifying of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. It says, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, which is Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, this is what we just read from Isaiah. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set a liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now he's doing this verbatim. It says, and he closed the book. Now I want this is what I want y'all to pay attention to. And this is going to basically lead me into my end. It says, and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Now, People that are truly into this, this, this Bible, that are scholars, that are students, I want y'all to pay close attention. First of all, ask yourself, why did Christ close the book? Because we're about to go back and see that he didn't finish reading that prophecy. And I'm about to show you why. Because what he just read was, was exactly pertaining to those Israelites in that time right there who did not lose their identity. They knew who they were. And I'm going to prove what I'm saying. It said, but he closed it. He closed it because the rest of it is speaking to a future group, a future group of Israelites that was not there at that time. Now watch this. It says, he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear, bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out his mouth, and they said, is not this Joseph's son? So he said, this day was all that they, he just read from Isaiah fulfilled in their ears, so that was concerning them, them, their generation, and him himself. Now watch this. Let's go back to what he was reading. Let's see why he closed the book. Isaiah 61, and I think I stopped, let me see, I stopped around verse 4. It says, now watch this. Matter of fact, I'll start at three. To appoint unto them the morning Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes and oil of joy for mourning, a garment of praise of the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness and planting of the Lord, they might be glorified. And they shall build the waste places. Now this is future. We're going into the whole back in the land kind of thing, but I want you to see what things got to take place why this is happening and before this. Watch this. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be, now listen to this, but ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourself. So now they're going to be accepted. Everybody going to know these the men of God. And at this point, we're going to boast ourselves. Now, this is a group that I'm going to show you was not acknowledged in the world as being the Jews or the holy seed of God. Watch this. For your shame, ye shall have double, and for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, <clears throat> they shall possess the double, everlasting joy shall be unto them. Now listen to this. It says, verse 9, and their seed 
shall be known among the Gentiles. Hold on. So up to this point, for the most part, their seed is not known amongst the Gentiles. This has to happen. Watch this. And their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord have blessed. Who is that talking about? Do the world acknowledge us as being the true seed? The world already acknowledged the Jewish people, so it's not talking about them. So whoever this group of people is, it will have to happen that they shall finally be acknowledged as the people that they say they will. And that's us. That's waking up, that's surnaming ourselves and all that. This thing is progressive, but it's starting already. And so I'm going to do a whole lesson on it, but I just had to throw that out there because I know they scrambling right now. It's NIVs and ESVs falling all off the bookshelves now because they scrambling looking for something. But when you stick in that book, and don't be, uh, you know, trying to go off, off, off these, all these Jewish commentators and all that. They claim to be uh, uh, experts, but they not even right. <laughs> so they don't even, they don't even, they don't even have the oracles in the first place. Then uh, that's right. You will say yourself embarrassment. Now go ahead, brother Chris. That's right. That's right. Uh, I got uh, uh my other brother Negi on here real quick. Hey Negi, did you want to add anything to that to the urban Christian apologetic? Um nonsense is going on uh no not really i just find it all very annoying and it puts me to sleep real quick so if i ever need <laughs> to go to sleep i just put one of those apologetics guys on i let them start talking and i hit the deck real quick oh. that's right that's right well um i want to help uh mikhail out with something and um one of the things he said he gets tired of using the same scriptures over and over again and i couldn't be in more agreeance because what they do is they sit back and they learn how to debunk, debunk yeah. Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. You know what I'm saying, Mikael? And they don't believe the book. Hell, they don't even believe their book. You see what I'm saying? They don't believe anything in the book. They only want to, if you really look at it, they only listen to what Paul say. They don't even listen to what um, the Nazarenes taught. They won't even listen to that. You understand what I'm saying? And they live strictly by the laws of Moses. You see what I'm saying? And, um, you know, um, of course, you know, I have my issues with Paul and et cetera, et cetera. But here I want to um, show you something real quick, Mikael. Um, maybe you can add it to your arsenal real quick. Turn to Lamentations chapter five. This is my warfare right here. I use this book. I use these books. Let's turn to uh, Lamentations chapter five. Hey, read to me. Um, read to me. Uh, Lamentations one through. One through five. Hold on one second. Okay, cool. Oh, Basil came back up in the room. Hey, do you have anything you want to say, Basil? Hold on, I'm still trying to figure this out, bro. Hold on. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you loud. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Cool. Well, one thing I have to say, when I, whenever I get into an argument with a Christian, I just bring them right to Ezekiel and um, and I remind them of, uh, let me see what that is, uh, Ezekiel 14, 20. And it reads, though Noah, Daniel, and Job are in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their own righteousness. That's right. So that right there lets you know, and nobody's righteousness is going to get you into heaven, but your own righteousness. That's right. So you want me That's to right. up? And hey, that was excellent too, bro. That the that yeah, I know exactly what you mean by that. So you want mm -hmm. me to start from verse? You want me to start from verse two, or you want me to start from verse ten? Because I think I know where you're going. <laughs> Hey, let's read that. You can start at verse. Uh, we'll start at verse one because that gives all the uh context about the scripture. All right, I got you. It's uh, this Lamentations chapter five, verse one. Remember, oh Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. It says, Our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. You want me to continue? Really, if we want to, we can stop right there. 
So right. with Jeremiah is writing here in the book of Lamentations. He's saying people have stolen their identity. Yeah. And we know what the Assyrians did when they came into the land. But remember, the curses are continual. And yeah. this is what's not being addressed to these apolo urban apologetics. I, and I'm going to call your name out, vocab. I don't throw stones <laughs> and hide my hands. I've been calling him out for the last, for the last, what, year and a half? Damn this. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll stay right in the book and chop him up. I'm not going to give him no commentary. I'm going to destroy you right in this book. So like but I said, see. I'm putting my sword in the fight finally now. You see but what I'm saying? See. But see, they don't like to do that. That's That's literally... That's literally what they don't like to do. They do not want to stay in a book with you because they can't. So they have to be validated by outside sources. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, but see, right. he here's my thing. You got a vocab Malone, um, and I'm going to just come out and say this. G-Con trolling right now. I know G-Con is too, ain't no way. I almost cuss. <laughs> Ain't no way that brother is doing this and know as much history as he know. There is no way that he, he's got to be trolling at this point. He has got to be trolling at this point just to get under people's skin. There is no way he acting like this, like he's stupid. And he's reverting yeah. back to being a... There's no way he doing yeah, I, I just don't... I don't even accept it. Well, I'm going to say if, if that's the case, I ain't going to talk too much about him because uh, he already about on video four about me. I ain't watched none. I only watched the first one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun Sunday. I mean, Go ahead. Was on there for like damn, in four hours to get it out of my system. And I was through and he steady making videos. But I will say this. Um, I will say this. Uh, that's the first thing I thought, too. I was like, ain't no way this brother. Cause literally he didn't fail that far back was to like, you know, even the basic stuff he didn't forget. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I don't know why he's doing it. I just leave it at that. You will have to talk to him personally to see why he's doing that. But it is a scary thing to say. That's all I, I that's all I say about him concerning that brother. Because he ain't here to defend himself, so I ain't gonna say nothing. I got that much respect still for him, even though he don't got it for me. He could have called me on the phone a long time ago. That's correct. That's correct. Well, um, like I said, I just want to, um, like I said, I'm putting my sword into this fight now. And, um, you know, I also want to read something else in um, Lamentations chapter five. And this is um, this is what they said. OK. And it says um, it says our inheritance has been turned over to aliens and our houses to foreigners. And, then, and this is what it says in verse three. We have become orphans and waifs. Our mothers are like widows. We pay for the water we drink and our wood comes at a price. They pursue us at our heels. We labor and have no rest. Now, like I That's said, right this now. Is exactly, <laughs> exactly. Hey, yo, exactly. you seeing that through every urban ghetto area in America right now from Camden to South Central, bro. Facts. Correct. Now, the prophets, they do nothing but give the testimony of what Moses received on the mountain. They, they're giving the same mm -hmm. testimony. You understand what I'm saying? So some people, they come into the prophets, and what I like to do is they looking for something instead of just reading it and let the word speak for them. If anybody's ever noticed me in my debates, I read the law and I read the prophets. But I, I whenever I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you using the prophets. You see what I'm saying? I'm not arguing with you from the dictates of my own heart. I can't do that. Not according to this book. I'm not allowed to do that. You understand what I'm saying? So what I noticed uh, is yeah. is what they be doing with you, Mikael, is they do a, a they do a lot of roundabout tactics with you. You be in the book, and then they gonna start explaining what you just read, and they go in this roundabout way of dodging what you just showed them, like that Deuteronomy thirty two and twenty six. That's an excellent scripture, right? Mm -hmm. I heard the video you did when you said G Man saw that, and his mind was blown. You see what I'm saying? But you know what? He, I give it to G Man. He admitted it. Which the rest of them right. do that. They just dodge. Vocab refused to answer it live on air on South Showtime. G Con refused to answer it. Uh, faithful to God. When I cut Jay with it, and he start like his face froze, like he like his brain broke. You know what I'm saying for a second, and he snatched the video down. 
Faithful got mad and started talking about he had debate me and speak in Hebrew. I'm like, dude, that ain't got nothing to do. Why don't you address Deuteronomy 32 and 26? He didn't want to touch it. So g man mm -hmm. admitted they had never read that, at least up to his knowledge. They never heard nobody do it. So he said, I'm going to go do some research. And if this is what, and this is what he said, you can go check g Man's show. He said, if this is saying what it looked like it's saying, that the people that scattered the four corners, the, the remembrance of them would cease or end. He said, y'all might, the Hebrew Israelites might have might be making the case, the best case ever, that they are the Israelites. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead. Con, con. Now, I want to show you something else um, in the book of Lamentations, because Jeremiah is lamentating for Israel. We all know what a lamentation is. I'm gonna go to verse 20. Remember, the the uh the um the curse or the mark is continual. And yeah. it clearly tells you in verse um chapter five, verse 20, it says, Why do you forget us forever and forsake us for so long a time? Turn us back to you, O Yah, and we will be restored. Renew our days as of old, unless you have <laughs> utterly rejected us and are very angry with us. This is the testimony. You see what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. It don't matter what no vocab Malone say. Look, man, you are a hold on. Neggy in the building. Hey, Neggy, unmute for a minute. Uh huh. Yes. What do you call yourself in Israel? What do you call yourself? Tell everybody what you call yourself. A cleaver. He cleaves on. Neg Neggy, can you are are you allowed to teach Israel Israel the book? Oh no, no, not at all. According to what? Oh boy. According to the Torah, I'm not allowed to. Uh, okay. Let me say. Let me say this. Let me interject. Oh. This, I am. You know what? I, I hope everybody is watching this. Look, we ain't out here on no racist stuff or none of that. You can't put that charge to Chris, right? Now, this man says he's a cleaver, meaning he cleaves onto the natural branches of the house of Israel. That's the problem. They say that they have with what they call a quote unquote moderate Israel. Israelites, which I won't start naming camps, but you know what camp I come from and all that type of stuff. They say, oh no, they're not bad. They're not bad. They they let Gentiles in their camp and stuff, but uh they are the supreme authority when it comes to the Bible and the Gentiles can't teach them and all that. They they have this is what vocab says. We have a hierarchy based on it. Well, <laughs> you show me when he ever gave the priesthood to anybody else. Exactly. Show me, I always say that. And let first us, man, Kings, listen. Look, first Kings chapter 8, verse 41 through 43. That is a protocol. That is a protocol. And it says concern. I'm, I'm just doing it off the top of my mind. You can go to it. But first Kings chapter 8, verse 41 through 43 says uh the, the he, he land out a decree, Solomon, on how you deal with the stranger. And it said they come from a far place. It says one that is not of thy people, Israel. So it's not talking about a strange Israelite. Is that you know genetics now? It ain't he's not an Israelite, and they come and they want to hear about the word of God. You're supposed to teach them, they're not supposed to teach you, you're supposed to teach them. Now, you teach them, they want to go teach some other Gentiles. That's cool, they ain't supposed to rule over the house of Israel. Point blank, period. That's the bottom line, and that's the reason why. Um, I try and tell what they do is they defer. I'm sorry, they debunk to the race. The Oh, you guys are being racist. You guys are being right. racist. Right. But, you know, one of the things, and I, I hope vocab belong, you yourself, Basil, and Negi gets, but we get back on here and we all talk. And I'm going to just, I'm going to open up something that he can't debunk. Oh, yeah. I'm, I got I got daggers for him all day long. I got daggers for him. And I'm going to put it on here on the screen share. And I'm just going to ask one question. And I guarantee you he not going to be able to answer it. No one ever has. I'm very meticulous on what I do and how I do it. I don't talk. I let the most high. I let his spirit guide me on what I need to say and what need to be said. That's why, you, you know, moving forward, I'm trying to get away from this just debating and arguing so much you see what i'm saying israel need to be rebuilt first you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying we have to we have to start being rebuilt spiritually first you know what i'm saying exactly. I, i'm always down for a good debate but the way i look at it is no matter how you believe or what you believe you know what i'm saying 
you're going to teach it your way and I'm going to teach it my way. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to teach it according to the law, statutes, commandments, precepts, orders, and judgments. You see what I'm saying? You're going to teach it to the way you understand me, Kyle. You know what I'm saying? And that's fine, but you still my brother. I'm not going to let a, a group of people or a police officer beat, beat on you because you believe a certain way. We got to be honest with ourselves in this thing here. And, and what's really going on, because we're all brothers on this panel. You just heard Meggy sit right there and say he a cleaver. See, that's the problem with Vocab Malone. Vocab Malone, he don't, he want, don't want to he don't, he don't want to cleave. He wants the Lord over. Exactly. And I tell people all the time, you can't use Paul to Lord over Israel. Because even Paul said, even Paul said it. In the book, has he rejected? Has he rejected his people? He says certainly not. He said you grafted in. He telling the Gentiles you grafted in. And you know what I'm saying? And I have problems with Paul, and but I, I, I have read the book. I and don't I'm, teach dogma. I'm, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. It's quite famous that Chris have problems with Paul. You know, no. And so this is something we can agree on. Let's say. Like I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of at the point where I've said this to some people, and I try not to be brutal because I know in the end of the day, people out there that just want to serve God. Like even us amongst Israelites, as you were saying, we might have different doctrines, but we all trying to reach the same goal. We trying to get back to the, the Most High of Israel. The only difference is us that uh that accept the New Testament in its totality. We feel that. Uh, Christ is the intercessor, like Moses was the intercessor. And, you know, on the other side, some will feel that some people take it to the point where it's idolatry. We understand that. So we have to deal with that. And we've been dealing with that with one another. But on a greater scale, we are all trying to figure how to get back to the God because we not arguing about whether we is or not. We know we are. So we try to see what's the best route to get back. Right. Even with Paul what's funny. He literally said and warned uh Gentiles, when he was talking to them, they basically don't try to take this from us. I can show you that. You know what I'm saying? And the tripped out part about it, in Paul's defense, where, you know, that's why Peter warned you about, you know, running to Paul. I remember at one time, I think even yourself thought I was Tanakh only because I read so much. And that's because when I, and this is what I'm trying to show my Messianic brothers that follow the New Testament is that when you read the New Testament from Old Testament, quote unquote, and I'm just using those for generic terms, from Old Testament eyes, then you understand it better. If you haven't studied that Old Testament or that original Testament, as I like to say, or the Tanakh, then uh, really the New Testament really looks like gibberish. That's my standpoint on that. You have to know the original, you gotta know, man, from Genesis to Malachi, man. And so I spent a lot of time in there. And so when I go back and read something that Paul might have said that looks suspect, I go back here. And I'm like, oh man, I don't know. He was tripping on that one. Or okay, I understand what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? I just thought of something right now, because I've I had a similar thought to you, and it's really funny you say that because. Remember when Paul said that Moses had a veil over his face, but he didn't go into the real reason why he had a veil over his face? Yeah, I, I recall I, I, I the recall verses you talked yeah, about. Yeah, that's really weird because he was probably hoping that the people who were listening to him wouldn't know what the context of that was. I mean, I know what it was, but the people who were listening may not have, so they were probably fooled by him, whoever he was writing to. Do you remember who it was? Uh, I'm I'm not sure. I don't want to misquote, but that sounds like Thessalonians. But I check and see. Okay. Well, they may not have known. They may have been Greeks, so they had no idea. But you know, I think we all can see that. You know, uh, like Chris was saying, we trying to. It ain't no we trying. The Most High is doing this thing. I've never seen you. You can go back to the Black Panther movie if you want to just throw us with some groups, right? Even the Nation of Islam, as big as that is, it has not had a global, profound uh, impact like the so-called Hebrew Israelite or the 
I call it the truth movement. Because anytime I can call a Ibu from Africa, a Shanti from Ghana, in which I can, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a, a, a philosopher from Ethiopia, a Limba from South Africa, who I spent some time with, you know, they came here uh, a couple summers ago. That was last summer and spent a couple of months here. And um, we could sit here and just bounce off each other. And they use an oral tradition and we using what we know and we put this together like, man, we fam, we them people. You know what I'm saying? We them people. And it's like it's becoming common knowledge. Dealing with some brothers in, in uh, 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 French and Dutch Guyana now. And Guyana, and they already knew they was Israelites. They actually got little schools and stuff like you would call camps or whatever. You got groups over there that say they from the tribe of Natalie. I don't know how they know that or how they came to that conclusion, but the point is they know they're Israelites. So this is not some religious fad that just started because of a political move. And they see this and they terrified the deaf of it. And you know what's going to scare them the worst? When uh, when white people start jumping on board and they uh, they have to realize they don't have a monopoly. Well, I mean, um, one thing I noticed what happened, and I'm I'm in agreement with you because they've been on top for so long now, and what it is is now that they see. Everybody waking up and they using the book to um help me out, Mikael. I need a big word. Help me out, Mikael. They're trying to, I don't want to use the word rejuvenate themselves, but they're using the but now they're using the book to return to their heritage. So-called Negroes are using the book to return to their heritage. And what you have now is you have somewhat church father Christianity saying, no, no, it don't matter who you are. All you have to do right. is just love with each other. No, they know once you begin to call upon the God of Israel, he going to react. And I'm telling you, I got daggers for days for vocab Malone because what that this team has managed to do is pigeonhole Israelites into rereading certain scriptures. I'm very good at what I do. I'm trying to tell you. And they'll approach you with, OK, so black people believe they're Israelites, right? And he'll then the first place we run, we're programmed to run the Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. That's the first thing we program to do. And when we do that, now they got all these arguments for you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it, it becomes then it becomes the same redundant argument. And secondly, the reason why I'm saying we need to come to try and come together. Let's put our theological differences to the side for a minute. Right. Our understanding to the side. We numbers, got infiltration baby. happening in Israel. <laughs> we need numbers, man. That's right. We got a lot of infiltration going on. And this is um my man, Anonymous Hebrew, spoke to me about this. And he said that. He said, Chris, the reason why everybody falling apart, he was just all like, and he said, That's he cool. said, we can't beat them is because we're all um separated. we're all um we're all we're separated, we're marginalized right now. And they're coming in doing damage. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So we got to come yeah. back What's together. Because remember when the Hebrew war machine was together, everybody was what? what? Everybody had different stances on that team. I was just yeah. about to, I was just about to use that example. Uh the brother anonymous says when you just said that Hebrew war machine, first thing popped in my mind. When could like and, and, and let me use that. I'm glad you brought that up because this part uh okay, about seven, oh. five, six, seven years ago. We had the so-called Kemetic Hebrew War. Everybody knows it's, it's still kind of going on. You know, Hebrews and Kemetics, uh, basically like GDs and Vice Lords of Bloods and Crips, right? And it, it's, it's just like that now. But when it first hit his epic, and I was part of it because I was with the Hebrew War Machine, that's exactly what even the Kemetics admitted. Like they ain't never seen all these different, like I thought all you Hebrew Israelites had different beliefs and didn't get along. But we formed like Voltron and they ain't high no wind. You know what I'm saying? That's basically all that they doing. And this little urban apologetics thing. And like I said, it's a fad. This little section that they got is going to come and go. This what we doing ain't going nowhere. And it's only growing. But 
it's still it's still somewhat a uh, effective nuisance that they've become because they're spreading they're dropping their garbage off onto the next christian groups especially negro christians they're dropping it off you know what i'm saying so we're gonna have to deal with it and like you said it's those same regular scriptures that we use to bring in and enlighten lost brothers and sisters on the streets or wherever we encounter them on social media we use these and now they've come with counter arguments because they're going to use about 50,000 different commentaries and all that type of stuff. That's why they hate us doing line upon line and precept upon precept, because they can't really do that with you if you know the book, because I'm not going to let you drag me off like you said that they try to do with the long. No, man, let's go back to the subject. And I got about 17 more precepts to bag this up. Then what they'll try to do is they'll try to contain each uh, they, they'll try to contain each verse to only that timeline to basically take you away from the conversation. But this is the same book that said it was a living word. Christ himself said you're supposed to go. It say when he sat down and opened the book, he went from the law. He went from the law. I mean, he went, he went from actually Genesis all the way to Malachi when he was doing his thing. He said that it say he did that and showed all the things I'm paraphrasing that was uh, a concern in him. Why didn't he do what they do? Why he didn't just stick to one little spot and say, oh, well, no, this is right here. Come on, man. They don't really believe what they letting it off that they believe. They have a deeper, sinister agenda behind it. And that is to shut the mouth of the true, you know, children of Israel. Point blank, period. Ain't no way around. Uh, con, con, exactly, exactly. I was muted out for a minute. And, um, you know, one of the things I like to bring forth is uh, Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter. I want to bring this out because I hope this uh, agrees uh, with you uh, word for word. This is 26 through 29. And this is how it reads. It says, there is no God like you. Excuse me. There is there is no one like the God of Israel who rides the heavens to help you and his excellency on the clouds. The eternal God is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. He will thrust out the enemy from before you and will say, destroy. Then Israel shall dwell safely, the fountain of Jacob alone, in a land of grain and new wine. His heaven shall also drop dew. Happy are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by Yah, the shield of your help and the sword of your majesty. Your enemies shall submit to you and you shall tread down their high places. This is written, this is what it is. You can't come against these. You're not allowed to talk about these. According to Deuteronomy, chapter, see this is, th 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 these apologetics, they don't eat the whole roll, Mikael, they don't eat the whole roll. Negi will tell you, Basil will tell you, Yehukanan will tell you, everybody on the panel, they pick and choose, you know, they just pick and choose. See, Deuteronomy chapter four clearly expresses. This is Deuteronomy chapter four, verse two. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it. That's what it say. You're not allowed to grab one verse and then create and add and insert things into there. You're not allowed to do that. And this is what they do. Either you're going to eat the whole roll or you not. He told Ezekiel the same thing in Ezekiel, as Ezekiel, the third chapter, I'm almost sure of it. He said, take this scroll and eat it. He got to eat everything. He just can't eat. He just can't eat what he want to. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? He can't yep. see it. Say right here, Ezekiel chapter three. Moreover, he said to me, son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my eyes and mouth and he caused me to eat that scroll. And he said to me, son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that I give you. So I ate and it was in my mouth like honey and sweetness. Then he said to me, son of man, watch this. Go to the house of Israel, speak my words to them, for you are not sent to a people of unfamiliar speech and hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not too many people, not you're not sent to many people of unfamiliar speech and of hard language whose words you cannot understand. Surely, had I sent you to them, they would have listened to you, but the house of Israel will not listen to you. 
because they will not listen to me for all the house of Israel are impotent and hard headed. Y'all just saw, and I'm gonna I'm a bring that into this, Vocab Malone ripped the slave trade. Man. Y'all just saw him rip it. Man, look, man. I'm gonna tell you, we gonna get to the Vocab Malone slave trade because y'all know I made a video about that. Matter of fact, I was the yeah. Y'all go check out Mikael Ben Israel page. I'm gonna say it again. Go subscribe and subscribe to my page too if you're listening. Go ahead, Mikael. Yeah, you know it ain't no secret. I was the first cat that grabbed it to be honest, because I I think he had just he had just aired like because I'm subscribed to all them. He had just aired like 24 minutes ago. I happened to just be sitting there bored. It popped up on my thing, and I was like, let me go check out old vocab, see what they talking about. And I normally don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Because he have a lot of stuff going on. I've got too much going on. I don't really pay attention to vocab as much as I would pay attention to our brethren that's on their side because, you know, they're around us more. Some said just go watch it because I had just had the thing happen with Jay, the producer, you know, we snatched his video down or whatever and went into a frenzy and start doing lessons back to back about doing around 32 or 26 once he realized he got cut with it, right? And so, um, I'm looking, and when he said he wanted to make a parody about slavery in America, I said, oh, boy, let me hurry up and snatch this. You know, I said, let me hurry up and get this. Now, it just happened to go viral, and you know, once certain Israelites get it, they, they going to just get real grimy with it. So, <laughs> I mean, but you opened the door for that. You know what I said? You opened the door for that. Now, well, what you was just saying, though, about, you know, um, um, you know, it, it, see, it's, it's so many things you just touched on. But one one thing I didn't want to lose track on was when you were bringing up um, how the, the prophets, the uh, blessings and curses are continuous. And I said that in one of my videos. I said, I think most Israelites teach this, though. But when they teach it on the street, of course, they're trying to get somebody's attention. You normally have to go to their schools or camps or something like that to see when they get in depth. But I could tell you, I'm like, I thought everybody knew. That, I mean, it's common sense. When was it written? Moses brought that in the Torah. He brought that before we even stepped foot in the land. You see what I'm saying? No, no, I mean, no, pardon me. I said that the wrong way. He brought he brought that when we left up out of Egypt. They put it like that. When we left up out of Egypt, he went up on the mount. You know what I'm saying? And he went and got that and he came down, right? So when you look at Deuteronomy, when he's reading the blessings and the curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28, he already laid down the foundation of what's going to happen to the nation of Israel. That was our constitution. That was our uh, amendments. If you do this, oh, I promise this going to happen. And it was something you said earlier, you said they're continuous. And that's the point I made in the video. Do you know that some think it even started with Babylon, but if you want to get deeper, it started before Assyria. It started before that. Because what even caused Assyria to come in? Joshua chapter 2. See, we're going to get into meat. This is why they couldn't sit with a handful of us that's in this book like that, real Israelites. Because the Most High only put it on real Israelites to a certain degree. That's no offense. But if it's our office duty as auto mechanics, and it's just your duty, you know what I'm saying, to let's say you, you might be a painter or a designer of the car, I'm going to be better at designing, designing the engine and all the intricate parts of the vehicle. That's just point blank period. But it's not something that I wake up with and I get. I have to study to show myself approved. And the most high, I think that's uh, Psalms chapter 111, verse 10, if I'm not mistaken. He said, great understanding is those that keep my commandments. So that's why what you said was vital, Chris. If they could keep us all shaded, oh, it don't really matter who Israel is and all that, then Israel is not going to behave like they should. They're going to still be like the rest of the world saying, you know, we just under love, liberty and grace and all that, you know, and, and you know, just love your neighbor. You know, you can eat what you want to. You can do what you want to. Then the most high is not going to open up your understanding. It's just point blank, period. He's not going to open up your understanding. And like I said, whenever you get a chance, just go read Joshua chapter two. And I think uh, you can pick it up around like verse nine on down. He, that's when we first started messing up and that's when the curses first kicked in and every time we he set somebody on us we get back in line and 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 the blessings came 
See, it's that it's that simple. Yeah, Mikael, I wanted can y'all hear me? We hear, yeah, yeah, we can hear you, Rod Akira. Hey, you guys go ahead and talk real quick. I'm about to run downstairs and take care of some business, but you guys go ahead and hold it down real quick. Okay, guys, peace. Hey, remember, no cussing, no fuss, and keep it nice and orderly. I'll be right back in a few. Yes, yeah, sir. I wanted to say, yeah, I, I, I can see what you're saying, because, I mean, if you start looking at the book of Judges and look at the oppression that was coming up on them, it's kind of like you said, you know, hey, they would uh, get right for a minute, then they'd get oppressed by, you know, the Philistines and all the other yeah. people. And then, yep. you know, y'all raise up uh, a judge to, you know, keep them in line. So, I, I mean, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, I also wanted to say, you know, I think what it is is they've become gang, they're gang banging, man. It's like, OK, look, you know, if you don't believe how I believe I, now, you a devil now. Now you you are an abomination. Like, hold up now. If me and you saying we, we both believe in the good news, then then what's the beef? If we got differences. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing. But just because I, I have a difference with you does not mean that you are the seed of Satan. And I don't even like the propaganda that's being put on you right now because, uh, you know, they, people trying to label you one West. Like, come on, man. You know, I've been listening to you for at least about a year and I can tell that you're not even one West. Now, there might be some things that some of the one West say some of the things we might agree with them on, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we subscribe to every aspect of their doctrine. It's just like uh, the the uh, the groups that they have, they have different members who are Calvinists and uh, yeah. dispensationalists and this yeah. and that. But at the end of the day, y'all coming together, y'all saying y'all coming together for one common goal. Okay, we respect that. But if they're gonna put a stimulation on you or whoever, then they need to have that stimulation for themselves. Because if y'all can come together in unity, and put your differences aside, why can't we come together and put our differences aside and come together in unity? At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? I believe how I believe and you believe how you believe. So when the judgment day come, we're gonna find out who's right and who's wrong. And Yahakana. I yield. Man, Yahakana and I like to say Shalom Barak Ahaba to you, Ak. I hope you enjoying the feast of unleavened bread, brother. And uh, thank you for that, for that, uh, you know, that that character witness, man. You know, I ain't saying my poop don't stink. You know what I'm saying? I can learn to deal with things better myself. That's why I'm, I'm like creating new policies. Um, I always create a policy each year, uh, each true year, you know, according to the Hebrew calendar. And we about uh, uh, 17, 18 days or, or whatever into... Um, Cause it's, let me see, it's the third day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So we, we somewhere up in there in the middle of the, of the new year. And, and uh, according to, of course, God's calendar, the Hebrew calendar. And the thing is, you know, like I said, one of my things is I'll respond once. If somebody make a video, bro, yeah, I see all that. You know, I'm one West and all that type of stuff. Why? Because I can speak cordial with my brothers. We still have something in common. Yeah, we have our differences. And, and we have them to the point where it's, it, it gets, it, get, it can even get heated. But the way I'm able to talk to, to, to other Israelite brothers from other camps is just the gift that the Most High gave me. It don't always go good, contrary to popular belief. People know I used to be calling certain known Israelites out to debate all the time. I just got to a point where I was like, you know, when it's time for us to deal with that, we deal with it, and I have. You know, but I'm not about to go attack them because you on the outside telling me I should attack them. And now they think they've started some type of new thing. Like, you know, why don't the moderates check the militants and the militants, all this type of foolishness when they just found out about this. Even the cats that they got over there for the most part until I'm informed uh, otherwise. And then I'll say, OK, well, that's cool. Wasn't really even in the truth that long. You know what I'm saying? They had cats over there that was two, three years in the truth from, from their own admission that I hear. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying numbers is everything, but what I will say, like if you look in the book of Job, when you had all the, um, you had Job homies trying to jump on him, you had a young cat sitting back named Elihu. And, you know, he stayed in his role or whatever. And he listened to them going back and forth. But at a certain time, it was time for him to speak up because he said a lot of what they saying wasn't wisdom, though it's supposed to have been wisdom. 
Like he said, them people with them gray and white hairs were supposed to have been spending some wisdom. And so, I mean, I've been in Israel for 23 years as far as knowing I was an Israelite. And I said, I wasn't always living it right. But so I always had that, let me study this, let me research this attitude. So a lot of the stuff that they coming with now is old news to a lot of us, you know? And, and you don't have to be in it 10, 15, 20 years. You could have been in it. I know cats that have been in this thing one year and they would destroy the, uh, the they would destroy the common doctrine of your uh, uh, everyday preacher that's been been up on the pulpit for 50 years. And this is a fact. And that should not even be possible. They ain't went to know a lot of them. We do have Israelites that used to be pastors under the uh, modern day Christianity. And a, a lot of them have went to seminary school or cemetery school or theology school. You know what I'm saying? But for the most part, none of us really did that. You know, and how is it that you can get a cat like yourself, your Haq and I, been in the truth for however long? I know you told me before, but put you up there with a preacher, well-known, well-respected as a holy man, meaning he's supposed to hide the oracles of God, you know, and he's been in this for 35, 40 years, and you could get up there and just literally make him look stupid out the same Bible that he read. That should tell them something. You, so you just Go ahead, go ahead. You want to know why? Because they're not getting, I mean, one thing, I spend time with the Most High. You know what I'm saying? It was 2010 when uh, I, he revealed what he revealed to me, everything going on. It, this, what, they, what they're doing is they're regurgitating. When you see a lot of Christians, they're just regurgitating man-made doctrines. You know, you know what I'm saying? They don't have a mind of their own, some of them. I'm not going to say all of them. You have to sit down and spend time with the Most High. Sit down praying to him, seeking him calling on him spend that time with him you, you know what i'm saying when you do that you will know that's why i can't nobody tell me what i am and what i'm not because my revelation came from the father didn't no man on no street corner come to me and say hey deuteronomy 28 this and deuteronomy 28 that first thing the father showed me was how what was his name and what was his son's name and when i found that out and took that in that's when he showed me who i was and that's when I started walking and doing what I was supposed to do because I'm sitting under these Christian ministers. They was telling me the law was done away with. But when I got to myself and started reading this book and started looking at the teachings of the Messiah and how he, he established the law and, and exalted it, I'm like, there's no way that uh, this could be what they're saying. And it's like I had to make a choice. I had to either choose what man is saying and roll with the crowd and, and be around a lot of people, but be doing it wrong. Or I had to take a stand on my own and obey the most high. Now, I ain't saying I've been perfect the whole time. I've made mistakes, but I've been a man about mine and I've always confessed them. So, you know, they can't stop this because this comes from the most high. Just like the stuff they doing, it comes from the most high. That doesn't necessarily mean that is righteous what they're doing. Satan is even got a, a a call from the Most High. It said that he was given permission to trample over the over the saints. So I'm not gonna sit up here and worry about what they're doing because at the end of the day, they got everybody got to face judgment. Yahuwah's will will be done. I yield. Yeah, that's is is you know like like you said you know um either way it go it still come from the Most High. Um, I'm gonna be quite honest with you. I'm at the point where I know it's that you know, we gotta remember too. Uh, the New Testament tell us something that I think everybody should take heed to, even if you don't adhere to the New Testament for the simple fact you can prove it's true. But he tell you basically don't marvel at, at, at men, you know, acting like ministers of light. You know what I'm saying? Because basically Satan himself pulls himself off as a minister of light or truth. So he going to have ministers that do the same thing. And you're absolutely right, Yahak and I, on a greater scale, they're still doing the work of the Most High. And I'm going to tell you why. If it wasn't for them antagonizing us, that's why I call them Christian antagonists, it wouldn't force uh, 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 individuals 
to deal with them on another level. So it makes you go back to your scripts. Hold on one second. One second, hold on. Yeah, you know, so basically it forces us to, um, you know, get on that next level with them. Like, if you know, you know the true meaning of this book, don't hold back. Go into it. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's just like anything else. It'll make you step, step your study up. Like we know we've done for them because up until lately, you never knew of a modern day Christian, you know, on a general scale that actually really took time to read the Bible. I hate to say that. Like, I mean, read it with some understanding, like really get into it outside of listening to their pastor and knowing a few, you know, quote, uh, verses here and there that, that, that become cliche. So, yeah, I, I'm with you on that, bro. Hey, man, I always say, if you're going to be wicked, at least do it the best way you can. <laughs> at least do it right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you don't want to serve your right. Howard, you know what I mean? Or right. whatever. Real talk, don't uh, be partial in whatever you believe in. That's what I'm saying. All right, real talk. And, the script, and, and you know, the books said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. You know, don't be lukewarm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my teacher always taught me. Uh, taught all of us that, you know, if you're going to do wrong, do wrong right. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to get the same thing anyway. So you might as well not be playing with it. Exactly. And so, you know, it is what it is, man. You know, um, ah, man, I still want to do that, that lesson. I kind of let a little bit too much out on that today because i know they already scrambling to that loop you know they finish you know they finish you know how it is they watch everything we do they scrambling to that loop for when that uh isaiah 61 and hold on man no see that's only talking about man look it is what it is but see the thing is i can do this all day humbly speaking and i always have to make this clear i don't think i got no type of monopoly on the word of god you know what I'm saying? Even though I am a natural priest of the Most High God, I am an Israelite by blood. But in order to stay in good grace with my father, I have to stay in his word. I have to study. I have to study. I have to take counsel with even those who know things on certain levels that I don't know and everything. You know what I mean? But once you, once you open the gate and release the dragon, it just comes out a big roaring flame and people get burnt. That's right. That's right. That's right. And um, one of the things um I want to um bring forth is tonight, um, time and time again, because I, I was gone for a minute, but I want to finish up my point on um what we're supposed to be doing. And one of the things that we're supposed to be doing, I want to bring up a story in Second Kings, the story of Josiah. This is my favorite story in the entire Bible. Okay. Um Josiah was prophesied to come. And when Josiah came, he tore down everything. He tore down all the fake images. He killed the priests that was teaching. He sacrificed them on their altars, not on the altar of the Most High. Then he burnt up the altars and smashed their altars. He even dug up bones. Mm -hmm. He even dug up bones and burned up the bones of these priests, right? Didn't I want everybody to see something real quick. What you say, Mikael? Didn't he kick the sides out too? Or was that late? Yes. Okay. That, no, he did all that. That's right. He did that too. Now, I want to bring this up. And this is what it says um, in uh, 2 Kings chapter 22. And this is what it, uh, in verse 8, it says, Then Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of Yah. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan and he read it. So Shaphan the scribe went to the king Bring it the king the word, saying, your servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of those who do the work. Who oversee the house of Yah? Then Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. Now watch this. Now it happened. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, that he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded Hilkiah the priest Ahiakim, the son of Shaphan, 
Akbor, the son of Mekaihaha, Shaphan the scribe, and Asiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go inquire of Yah for me, for the people, and all, excuse me, and all, and for all of Judah concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is, is the wrath of Yah that is aroused against us, because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book to do according all that is written concerning us. Now, first thing we learn when reading the first five books is seek ye the book of the law. Ahaz had Israel out of um, true temple worship for almost 75 years. It, it was almost 75 um, years between um, because Ahaz allowed all those um, idols into the land. Ahaz allowed all that. So there was like 75. There was a, I think it was almost a 75 year gap between that, that there was not true temple worship. But I want you all to pay attention to what Josiah does. OK. Um, verse 14, so Hekiah the priest, Iakim and Akbor, Shaphan and Asiah went to Hudiah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvah, the son of Haras, keeper of the wardrobe. She dwelt in Jerusalem in the second quarter and they spoke with her. Then she said to them, thus saith the Lord. This is her saying this. It says, thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, tell the man who sent you to me, Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will bring calamity on this place and all the inhabitants, all the words of this book, which are which the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods. Now, many people sitting up there saying, well, damn, why is the most high punishing Josiah? He did all the uh, he restored true temple worship. I'll show you all in a minute. Watch this. Um, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be aroused against this place and, shall, and, and it shall not be quenched. But as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of Yah, in this manner you shall speak to him. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel concerning the words which you have heard. Because your heart was tender and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they would become a desolation and a curse. There's that word curse. That's why I brought this up. Watch what he says. And you tore your clothes and wept before me. I have heard you. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Surely, therefore, I will gather you to your fathers and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace and your eyes shall not see all the calamity which I bring to this place. Now, why did not he, why didn't he destroy it then? Because they, all of them, they wept before the most high and the King Josiah saved them from utter destruction. He said, I heard you. We can learn about this in Leviticus 26, Deuteronomy chapter 30, 1 Kings chapter eight, Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14. I'm like a machine with these three, uh, with those passages right there because they sought the book of Yah and they, they sought repentance. Remember, the most high is slow to anger. He's slow to anger, but I wanna back up why he would destroy them according to the law. And I'll show you in Numbers chapter 14. All we gotta do is read this book, chapter 14, verse 18. All right. Um, it says right here, 14, verse 18, the, the most high is long suffering and abundant in mercy, forgiving iniquity and trans transgression. But he by no means clears the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Pardon the iniquity of this people, I pray, according to the greatness of your mercy, just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. So even though you're guilty, you can still have mercy as we saw with King Josiah, Hodiah, and all the priests. They wept before the Most High and he forgave them. This is why we're supposed to be constantly seeking his face. We all have sinned. That's the underlying message of this entire book. He'll destroy you. He's already said that, but we're not weeping. We're not crying and we're not repenting. According to Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, Leviticus 26. Let's get in this book. Let's study this book and let's come together so we could destroy the enemies of the most high.
because he got those same enemies on our asses right now. Excuse my language. All right. I told Mikael I wouldn't cuss. Sorry about that, bro. Um, so this is what we're supposed to be doing. Let him be the judge of the enemies of Israel, because that's the pow power that I serve. Um, so with that being said, I want to ask anybody else. Uh, well, let me say this again. Um, urban Christian apologetics. I'm on you. I'm on y'all. Uh, vocab Malone. I'm on you, boy. I'm telling you, I'm on you. And that nonsense you said, um, Synagogue J, G Con, So Real, Sister Cherry, um, and the rest of uh, in that um that dude with them dreads that disrespected our sisters like that, talking about sisters take note. I'm coming after you too. And I'm telling you, I, I, I'm telling you, I don't play that. I wait, left wait, the group. Wait, 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 the opposite. You understand what I'm saying? I'll just say that because I don't believe in skin color. You understand what I'm saying? I try, not, I try to get away from that. He was strange. A non Israelite. She, what, white or something like that? Yeah, yeah. And when he was rapping, I'm surprised you ain't seen that video. He was praising her. But when he was praising her, he said, Sisters, take notice. This is a woman of God. I said, Oh, no. Oh, hell no. Oh, heck. Excuse me. I said, oh, oh no, he did not just say that and downplay his name, Chris K Dub. That's what he said. And I said, oh you know no. what? It's funny why it's funny why that wait a minute. Wait a minute. A brother was trying to debate me yesterday in that Christian Hebrew Israelite group, and his name was K Dub. That's he, him. He did high dress though. He had a little fat face. Okay, Chris K. Dub, he's got those dreads. He's got dreads. He might not have them anymore, but that's it's, him. Does he got a big nose? Is is Chris spelled with a K? Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's him then. So look, I had seen, yeah. I had let him know that I had I, I had seen him in a video before. I think either getting beat up by Sakari or he was debating another opponent. Yeah, yeah, that's him. That's him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. For the record, to call him. Apologists, because they're gonna try to get down on you for that. You know, so apologists are the people, and I know you know this. Apologetics is the system itself or the defense that they're making. Because I see this with this how petty they get. I was watching them, they talked to a brother, they don't even know the difference between an apologist and apologetics. You know, this is what they gotta say. So I'm just saying, just throw it out there so they don't try to dismiss your whole conversation. Right, apologetics is the doctrine. Apologists is right. the group of people. Right? Exactly. Yeah, I know. They can't so, play me with that. Yeah. No, no, we, we, we got to get petty with them sometimes. Cause that's because they real. They get petty because they can't deal with the meat no more. They see they don't have a win. But now, if, if that dude did that, I'm I'm gonna say something. See, but I, I'm gonna be quite honest with you. It doesn't surprise me. Um, if you just look at their whole thing, and they have absolutely no cultural racial or ethnic ethnic um loyalty whatsoever like they don't even care about that at all and i guess that's okay for some people you know in the end of the day the most high is what's more important than anything but basically if you listen to them talk sometime it's as if it don't matter at all like they not even black so it don't surprise me like you know if you know like that if you really look at it, it shouldn't shock you because you got to think it can be a problem when any group is just formed off identity. And that's all it's formed off identity. It ain't no spiritual foundation to it. It's nothing greater than your identity because that can open the door for your own destruction for the simple fact without without moral guidelines or something more supreme than just your ethnicity. It opens the door for infiltration and destruction or whatever you're trying to call because it's wicked people in every race, point blank, period. So it'll be one of you come take you, take you out. But at the same token, to have absolutely no national pride whatsoever, it is almost a freak of nature 
it is, it is like abnormal. Every creature on earth has some type of built-in survival of the species type thing where they're going to try to defend their own. If you, I love watching Animal Planet. If you look at a herd of buffalo, or if you look at a herd of wildebeests in the African plains in the Segeti and all that, right? Serengeti. If you look over there, when they see some lions creeping up, they all get each other back. They got the strong ones on the outside to protect the weaker ones. These cats have totally lost the concept of that. It's not even in their bone, bro. They don't even see you as their brother in no shape, form, or fashion. And what I don't like, I got to say this, being that I am a New Testament or a Messianic, or if you want to say a biblical Christian, see, I can say that amongst people that know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Not the normal generic Christian, Christianity and sanity thing. Um, but uh, I can say this. They take things out of context like, like you know what they love to run in the ground? And I use it when it's appropriate. When 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 Jesus Christ said that, um, you know, who is my mother, who is my father, who is my brother, them that do the will of my father, right? And they just say that to me like, you know, I have absolutely no type of tie to you. We're not in the same boat. We didn't come over here in the same way. Our communities are not next door to you. We were not in the same community and nothing like This is how disconnected they are from reality. You know what I'm saying? Like they make the, they don't know that that, that actually even in his own self is basically telling you righteousness over all that just genetic stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they just forgot about the slave ships and all that type of stuff. I think we all agree, and I'm reading, uh, I was responding to a comment in the side chat, but you know, I think we all agree that it's wickedness in every group. But to straight lose the natural, now for, for, for when they try to say stuff like that, I could break it down and show them where in that same occasion, Jesus was saying that he came for his own. You know what I'm saying? He came for his own. He knew some of them, a lot of them was wicked, but he was trying to recover. And if they didn't want to be recovered, did he just came for the ones that heard his voice? So they seem to pick and choose what they want to quote. So it would not surprise me that that cat even did that because he kind of got that, that look. You know what look I'm talking about, just like that look. Like you, like put it like this. If it go down right, they say we was outside, brother Chris. Me, you, we, we started outside, and uh, some Aryans pulled up on us. They finna try to do harm to any Negro they see. If I see him standing around, I'm just gonna look straight past him. Like he got that look. Like, oh well, I know that ain't gonna be no help. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. Everybody still there? No, no, yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah, and to go back to what you were saying, man, when you yeah. was breaking down, um, when you was just breaking that, that down so excellency, so excellent, it, it made me think of something else. And it goes back to what we saying. Um, being that we know we them people, y'all can't prove we not them people. See, what they like to do is they try to put it all on us, just prove that you're them people. Now we prove them them people. All they do is try to come with a rebuttal to prove that we not them people. But what they never do is attack or, or is deal with the authenticity of those who claim to be them people. Exactly. That's how you know it's an agenda behind this, and it's got it's got the smell of Zionism all on it because because you know, look, if we know we them people, right? Let's say doctrine of the law, keeping the feast outside Jerusalem and all that. You know, we're going to have to deal with that. But one thing any culture is going to do is they're going to somewhat um, admire the history and the culture of the forefathers that came before them. So being that we know, they know that we believe that this book was 100% written by our ancestors. That example that you used in Second Kings, was perfect. And another one I think that go very good as an example would be Nehemiah chapter 8, 
Matter of fact, if you ever read Nehemiah, Ezra, and them, you will see that their whole mission was to get us back on track because we fell off. If you go to, I believe it's Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, if you go there, you'll see where uh, they start back instituting the feast. And they did it on the seventh month in the first day. Now, you know, we know Leviticus chapter 23 and the Torah, then we know that that was, uh, I believe that was the blowing of the trumpets. You see what I'm saying? I believe that's in the seventh, seventh, seventh month, if I'm not mistaken, in the first day, because after that, you got, yeah, you got the tabernacles and all that type of stuff, right? So he started back instituting it then. And what did the people do, Chris? You remember what it said it did? They did exactly what you were saying earlier. They got the book of the law, man. They got the book of the law. And when the people acknowledged that they had been out there bogus, they wept. They got they got depressed. He had to tell them, no, nah, man, don't, don't, don't do that. Y'all didn't know. You know what I'm saying? So let's just keep these feasts, go to y'all house, let's kick it, get drink for all that type of stuff. And he said, rejoice. Be happy that you know now. Now, now let's get back in the good grace with our father, our father. That's the whole key. And they don't want Negroes to do that. So therefore, the crime rate gonna stay stupendous. The AIDS rate going to stay stupendous. The um, fatherless children rate is going to stay at the highest of any other nationality on earth. I'm trying to tell you nothing about very little, I'll say, about what they teach and what they bring in or what they're trying to counter us with. Very little of it is productive for us as a people. Point blank, period, let alone the world. Con. And I want to bring this up, too, since we're talking about the book of Nehemiah in these feast days. Now, in the book of Nehemiah, we understand that Nehemiah was a governor and Nehemiah returned to the uh, prince of Persia at the time. And he returned back to Persia, but he wanted to see the overseeing. He was there to re uh, see the overseeing of the rebuilding of the walls. So Israel was commanded to return home under Cyrus. See, Cyrus was a very noble king. Everywhere he went, he was freeing people. But let's focus on Israel right now. So when Cyrus allowed them to return home and um, decreed that the uh, temple be rebuilt to the God of Israel um, or the Most High Yah, this is what uh, Yah said when they returned into their land in the book of Zechariah chapter 8. And we're talking about these feast days. This is what he says. I'm going I'm, I'm to go start in because Zechariah, he was one of the uh, prophets that returned from the captivity. OK, you can read about that in the book of Ezra. But if we go here to... Um, in um, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 15, I'm going to read this. And Amayan had a hard time. Um, he didn't want to accept this, but it is what it is. It's what's written. Um, Zechariah what's chapter written? 8, verse 15, and it reads, So thus saith the Lord of hosts, So again in these days I am determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Yehuda. Do not fear. These are the things you shall do. Speak each man truth to his neighbor. Great judgment in the gates for truth, justice and peace. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor and do not love a false oath. Vocab, never mind. Vocab Malone. False oath in all day. Let's continue on. All right. Let none of oh, you no. think evil in your heart. In my side, that of vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor and do not love a false oath. For all these things I hate, saith the Most High. Let's continue. The word of the Lord of hosts came to me again, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the, the, fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth shall be joy and gladness and cheerful feasts for the house of Yehuda. Therefore, love, truth, and peace. There it is right there. Those are the feast days. But in order to get these feast days, you got to return back to the book of the law and call upon the name of the most high. And this is what I'm trying to get people to see. But the first thing we going to do, Mikael, we going to come together and I'm going to put that spear through this, uh, what's it called, um, through these uh, Christian apologists because it's got to happen. And I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to fuss. I'm going to use the book and let it do all the work for me. And trust me, <laughs> they're going to be on suicide watch when I'm uh, done. You ain't, you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't have to say it like that. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to. I ain't going to say nothing to you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? So does anybody else want to add in? You guys are on the board. You know, you guys can chirp in too. Come in too. I had a uh, funny thought uh, recently. You know how all those guys are like, so where's your, your altar? Where do you do your sacrifices? <laughs> you've heard, you've, you've heard, if you've been in this, you probably hear that. Yes, I've heard of them. So, yes. uh, my thing that I just recently, you know, realized you can do is you can flip it around. You can ask them where their altar is, because if you go to the New Testament, quote unquote, you do see that it says, you know, eat the eat the body and blood of Jesus. And, uh, you know, which churches do that literally. So the mm -hmm. question is, if these guys, uh, even though they're probably on some kind of Protestant side of things, you know, why, why aren't they doing what it says to do? Where's their altar? Right. Yeah. Con, Con, I definitely agree with you on that, Negi. And um, like I said, um, we got more viewers in the audience. I want everybody, I want you to tell everybody again, what is your relationship to the house of Israel? It's it's as a cleaver and nothing else. So, okay. Are you allowed to teach the book? No. Okay. Y'all heard it again, folks. He reads the Torah and he understands only the true priests of Israel can teach the book. He understands that. I will let him debate vocab Malone on that. And trust me, he will pick vocab Malone apart on that. That's why Negi's on the show. That's why I had him come on today. He's at least honest in that facet. You understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. um, does anybody else have anything to say? Because I'm getting ready to close it out. Um, it's war for me against the Christian apologetics. Um, I'm not focusing on much else other than that, um, other than the betterment of my people right now and the betterment of um, relationships and, um, you know, with my people. But this uh, VM or JMR, I know your real name. Um, you finna get torn down, partner. Who you talking about? <laughs> Who you talking about? John Mark Rising? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, Ryan, let me say something too for another part. I, I gotta, you know, gotta do a clarification thing for, of course, uh, all the people that'll be viewing this. As y'all see, uh, we all come. <laughs> From, uh, diverse concepts throughout the uh, Israelite community on this panel, so it's been made that we we don't agree on a lot of things. Like you know, me and Chris don't on a few things and things of that nature. But um, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like everybody got an uncle or a cousin that they really don't. You know, they don't do a lot of the stuff they do. But he gonna be at that family reunion. He gonna be there. So you can stop trying to act oh, like. You know, <laughs> so my thing, <laughs> like, when you said that about the the, the, the Gentile thing or, or a cleaver, which I ain't gonna lie, that, that's kind of funny. I never heard that term before. You know, we usually say a, uh, <laughs> we usually say a sojourner or something like that, but cleaver, that's 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 a right. good. One. Um, I'll say this from my standpoint, he could teach the book, but he could teach the book to his people because when you see the examples. With all these videos, like I read that Luke chapter four led me to Isaiah 61, it's going to be a time when they're going to acknowledge that we are that holy seed. And how is they going to know that if they don't tell their kids? This is how you see those uh, all these videos coming out with these other nations. Or if you want to say, quote unquote, Caucasians and things of that nature saying that, man, the Negroes, them the real Israelites. Now, they got to tell their kids that. And they got to tell their friends that. So they're going to have to crack that book. You know what I'm saying? As far as them getting up and um, starting a, a, a congregation and standing before the children of Israel or the so-called African-Americans, Jamaicans, and all that type of stuff, and Brazilian Negroes and Afro-Cubans and all this, everywhere else we scattered. But as far as them getting up there and ruling over that, no, nah, we already, that's already happened. It's called the, 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 the Vatican. It's called Rome. And we see how that's turned out. And a lot of Negroes don't want to let that go. You know what I mean? Um, you see that with even some Negroes that do find out they're Israelites and they let, let's keep it real, the synagogue of Satan. They let Judaism lord over them. So yeah. 
it, it never works with us because that's not their rightful place. And you can't find that nowhere in the book. That ain't got nothing to do with supremacy. They got to do with order. And, you know, it's, it's just funny to me that we devalue ourselves so much that we don't, yeah. we should be on top on nothing. On let, me, let me, let me, let me add to that. Let me add to that real quick. I'm gonna go to Lamentations chapter five once again. <laughs> and, um, I'm going to start at verse 11 to add on what you're saying. You can finish up verse 11, um, chapter five, verse 11. It says they have ravaged the women in Zion, the maidens in the cities of Yehuda. Princes were hung up by their hands and elders were not respected. Young men ground at the millstones. Boys staggered under loads of wood. The elders have ceased gathering at the gate and young men from their music. It's, let's continue on. The joy of our heart has ceased. Our dance has turned in the morning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us for we have sinned. Go ahead. Continue on. Beautiful morning. And, and that perfect note, we're going to continue doing what they hate us to do. And that's line upon line and precept upon precept. And I'm going to do a whole show about what that means too. Because it seems <laughs> a lot of whole concepts of we had scrolls. The original books were scrolls. You see what I'm saying? And it's a reason that it's saying what it's saying because they act like the God that we serve had limited vision. Like he could only talk to those Israelites at that time. But when technology in the future came and new writing styles and stuff came, all of a sudden his word is null and void. That goes to show they truly don't believe in God. They truly don't. They don't believe in him as an infinite power, as they claim they do. Y'all, y'all see what I'm saying? And that's why they don't like to talk to certain people. So on that note, since Lamentations 5 did such a laid out the red carpet so good for me, we might as well stay on in the book. Let's go on back to Deuteronomy and I'm going to go to uh, chapter 30. Now listen to this. I'm going to start at verse 10. It says, talking to us, oh, so-called Negro. Listen to listen to this, y'all. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thine soul, for this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Uh, I ain't gonna say the name. My homeboy over there that's trying to tell people, huh? Um, I'm just noticing. It seems like, you know, um, you, you can't even keep those laws and stuff if you're not in the temple or if you're not in Jerusalem. Well, let's see. <laughs> let's see if the book say that's true, because he knew he was going to scatter us. And that's another. Reason that Yes. Let me just throw this out there, too. For uh, 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 let's let's just call this um, <laughs> understanding the Torah for dummies. Right. Let me say this real quick, because, of course, we know Jerusalem was the head court of this planet, let alone Israel. So we know that was the base for everything. And we know the temples was those standpoints for God. But we also know he knew he was going to scatter us into captivity. So when you read them laws, it's certain reasons that it have certain words attached to it. Although he tell you under the temple, he tell you, you know, come to Jerusalem, keep these feasts while I place my name. Then he turn around and tell you, and all your dwellings. And he says, well, I've scattered thee. Now watch this. Mm -hmm. It also says, verse, mm -hmm. verse 12, it says, it is not in, oh, oh let me start at 11. It say, for this commandment, which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Mm -hmm. Up for us to heaven. And bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. No, it ain't up there, y'all. It's right here in this book in my lap that I'm reading. Now, watch this, verse 13. Neither is it beyond the sea. Uh oh. Who shall go up? Ain't we beyond the sea? You got to go across there to get to Jerusalem, right? So, nah, you ain't got to do all that. Listen to this man. That thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us <laughs> and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? It's, but the word is very nigh or near unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. So 
people, we got the return back and we got to try to get this thing as right as we can under the conditions that we are under and, and, and stop being lazy, man. Stop depending on other people to do the work for us. We got to. We got to turn back. We going to turn back because it is written. Shalom, shalom. All right. All right. Yeah, I being said, say oh, quick. Can I say something real quick, Chris? No, no, I'm just playing. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, there's uh there are some uh Caucasian congregations that are teaching that uh we are the people. Uh you have a guy named Matt Nolan called Torah to the Tribes, but I don't see none of the black apologetics attacking this guy. Uh there was another guy who is Caucasian that has a congregation in, in Philadelphia and, and uh, Israel Doctrine put it on the uh, Christian Hebrew thing and uh, nobody's attacking this guy calling him a racist or anything like that. I also wanted to make another point, all this finger pointing. Um, if you Google, Google up how many Christian ministers with HIV have been giving women AIDS and it's, 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 it's very, it's this going on nationwide, you know what I'm saying? You can Google it up. And these ministers, these are pastors of churches who are married, who know, who knew that they had HIV and had AIDS and it was, uh, purposely giving it to other women. But you don't see us pointing fingers about that and, 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 and trying to put all Christians under that umbrella. So why are they trying to put us under an umbrella that we don't even fit under? With that, That's I yield. Interesting. That's interesting. Hey, Chris, let me say this one last thing on top of what he just said. I know you're trying to get off. But Go ahead. Interesting. I think I know I've heard of one of those uh, Gentile teachers that you're talking about. But I want you to inbox me all those guys' names you're hocking on so I can look further into them. I also, also like to make one, th one, one point clear before we get off. Um, it is not a mystery that all of Israel do not agree how to get to what we're trying to get now. Some brothers are a lot more harsh than other brothers with it. Some brothers are too standoffish or too, too almost, uh, concealed with it as other brothers feel. And I, I, I see both sides, but I will say this, um, I will blaze any Hebrew Israelite that I think is out there making the most high and uh, the most high God, the word of God, and us as a people look bad. I, I will do that. I've done that. That's not something I got to prove to people when people know this. But what I got to say, I got to make this quite clear. I believe it was James White, their father. Not only did he make a statement basically uh, telling us to stop crying about slavery and things of that nature and, uh, you know, uh, stop putting, basically he don't understand why we put so much importance on what happened to our ancestors because he's Irish and Scottish and all these other things that he named. Um, and, and it was funny because I pointed out in my video that even the Irish, um, after they came out of their little tribulation amongst their own uh, Caucasian brethren, they actually went on to own slaves. And that's why you have names like Shaquille O'Neal. But that's not the point I'm pointing out. The point is why he says something like that. And I believe it was him. I don't want to lie on him. But it was somebody from that side who also made the, the quote that the quote unquote black Hebrew Israelites, again, which is an FBI coin term, some, some Israelites are... Uh, for whatever reason, they, they don't mind that term, but he said that they are worse than the KKK. I got to say something, and I asked this on the, um, in the groups. Let's please do a body count. I, I would like, let's just say for the last 50 years, um, since y'all think Hebrew Israelism, you know, they, they didn't slap that on us, which is the goofiest sign of stuff ever. It's like the British Israelism, which we all knew about. I mean, when I first came in the truth, we used to laugh at the little 12 tribes chart that the, with the British and America um, and Ass and Ephraim and all that silly stuff, right? And uh, they basically said that the KKK uh, uh, the, uh, uh, and the Hebrew Israelites, many of the militant black Hebrew Israelites, as they call them, that stand on the corner, are basically the exact same. Matter of fact, he said they were worse. I take that back. Worse than the KKK. So I would like them to just get a recordation of the last 50 years since uh, 
these Israelite groups have been sprouting up everywhere and compare it. We ain't gonna even go back to the old days of the Klan and the Aryan nation. Let's just compare them in the last 50 years. And I wanna see the body count on how many Europeans or, or, or Caucasians have been hung by trees, set on fire, castrated, and all these type of things is comparison to all these incidents that I've heard even just in my lifetime of it still happening in certain parts in the South and in uh, jail cells and things of that nature. So I would like to compare them because that was a very, and I think that shows the attitude of how they really feel. The KKK was an authentic official terrorist group. Terrorist group. The first act of terrorism on American soil was committed by white folks firebombing black people from airplanes. That had never happened before. And the KKK took pride in these type of things later on. I'm not saying that the KKK did that, but the KKK actually in the white, uh, what is called, um, what's that, the, the United World Church? I can't think of it. But they actually like this type of thing. So I'm saying, are you mean to tell me from some cats getting up there with no power other than telling you that you're going to be slaves in the kingdom and uh, the most high going to cut your head off and we going to fight when he come back. Now, as strong and as harsh as those words are, that does not come that does not compare to you actually doing it. So this shows if you would even side yourself as a black person with somebody who thinks that less of you, just think that less of you. I'm going to tell you, you are worthless in this entire movement, and only God can say, peace. All right, well, brothers and sisters, um, I guess we're going to get ready to close out. We gonna get ready to close out, and um, I got a debate in the chat room going on about Leviticus 19 verse 33, and um, Tony and Neggy, I guess they've agreed to debate. If y'all want to debate that verse and um, pull out something that I'm not seeing in this verse in Leviticus 19 and 33, let me know off chat, and um, we can take it from there. But um, let me come on out and say it before I leave. Before I leave, excuse me. Hold on, let me uh I like to always be on camera when I when I log when I log off so everybody can see me. All right, brothers and sisters, um that's it. Um Christian apologetics and Christians apologists, you Christian apologists. Mm -hmm. Y'all on the firing line. With that being said. All praises to the Most High, the God of Israel. Peace to Brother Mikael for coming on the show. Peace to you, Hukanan, for coming on the show. Peace for Yakanan. Peace um, for Brother Basil. Um, let me uh, give us uh, some shout outs. Um, peace to Miss um, Karki. Um, peace to Brother Josh. I'll be at me and him not seeing eye to eye right now. Peace to Brother Bleedo, aka the Patrol King. Peace to all the subscribers that um are subscribing to the show, um, subscribing to the channel. I'm gonna be bringing forth a lot of great things. Um, peace to Brother Al Young. Peace to Brother uh, Davon Mays. Um, and peace to myself all right thank you for tuning in i hope y'all enjoyed this as much as i enjoy bringing it to y'all with that said, oh peace to kenneth mckinney peace bro i see you came up in the chat too thanks a lot tuning in um peace to amber peace to out out the blue peace to um torah